Good afternoon. I'm Gloria Nelson with Tug, and we're so glad to have you join us today for our Tug Connects 365 programming. As you settle in and get ready for the start of today's webinar, let me give a brief introduction for Tug, the user group, for both our current members and those of you who represent organizations that haven't yet joined our online community of Infor distribution software users. Now, we've all heard the phrase that knowledge is power, and I can say with confidence that after today's presentation, you'll be waking up tomorrow with a little more of both. Tug webinars, online forums, and member events facilitate the timely exchange of ideas and information to help you work smarter and with more confidence, and that's a powerful combination. If you're currently a member, it pays to get even more involved, and if not, please visit our website to discover why 2300 heads are better than one to help you be the best at what you do. Now, before we get started, let me touch base on a couple of housekeeping announcements. Buckle up for about 35 minutes, drop your questions into the Q&A bubble, and and on your toolbar, feel free to comment and share insights with those online in the chat portal as well. We monitor that too. So regarding intellectual property and permissions, you are invited to take screenshots today and or copy the chat history to maximize your experience. And now it is my pleasure to introduce you to Kevin O'Connor, account manager with, with our new Tug partner, DQ Technologies. Kevin, go ahead and take it away. Okay, uh, thanks very much. I really appreciate it, Gloria. Welcome everybody. Um, we're gonna do a little seminar today and hopefully you'll get some good information out of it. We're just calling it Keeping Up With Amazon, um, Delivery Management and Customer Notification Tools. We'll start with a brief PowerPoint, just DQ Technologies is a company based in Austin, Texas, and we've been in business since 1992. We focus on routing, dispatch, and order tracking, and we've got expertise in most all of the vertical markets that um, Infor dabbles in. Wholesale distribution, obviously, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, and industrial distributors. We have some paper folks, uh, graphic supplies, and Sanjan distributors. We started in the lumber and building materials industry and still have a large number of those folks along with drywall and roofing. And we have a small subset of customers in the automotive aftermarket warehouse business. So from a solution standpoint, our flagship product is called ODT, which stands for order delivery tracking. And we'll spend most of our time talking about that today along with our advanced routing module which is utilized by probably 20 or maybe 30 or 40% of our customers. We are a GPS company. So for those of you that have standalone GPS, you'll see today what integrated GPS with dynamic geofencing and order tracking can do for you. Because we're a GPS company, our solution also provides a fleet management and vehicle maintenance module. And you'll see that we have a driver app. That driver app does proof of delivery signature capture, picture capture, driver notes, integration for navigation, for turn by turn. And then for those of you that have log required drivers, we have an FMCA certified ELD solution and our solution will also do daily vehicle inspection reports. So, I mean, based on the title of the solution, we've got to talk about our customer portal app and API and our e-messaging notification module. Those are our two customer facing solutions that we'll spend time talking about today to show you how you can actually beat Amazon at their own game in terms of communicating with your customers. So the solution that we have, the objectives for most businesses deal with a number of different areas. First of all, and, and because we're doing this in a very short um, time frame, say 30, 35 minutes versus a typical demo is an hour and a half. I'm going to show you a number of things in the PowerPoint, and then we'll do a little bit of a live demo, and then we'll do some Q&A. So the first thing I want to talk about is just the routing tools to help your dispatcher do a better job. One of the things that they can do is just what we call drag and drop, where you can choose from orders on the bottom of the screen that have not been scheduled. You can sort, sequence, and filter them in many different ways and make dispatch solutions, and then just basically drag them up to the top of the screen and assign them to a vehicle and a time slot, um, and then make a real quick right click and optimize those orders. We do have an advanced routing um, wizard, which we're gonna take a look at in the demo today, 
And this is where you get really automated, where we can look at things like your customer locations and the capacity of the vehicle and dispatch parameters, the cost of each type of vehicle. You've got box trucks and flatbeds and um, tractor trailers and boom trucks, and they all cost a different amount of money to operate. Road network distances. You have customers that require you to make a delivery, say first thing in the morning or only between one and three, or maybe you've got an emergency situation you have to handle. Those things all work in with what we call the work time parameters, which means, you know, how long do you want your drivers driving and how long do you want them working every day? And the software will, as I'll show you today, can produce something like this, which is a really nice and optimized um, utilization of all your vehicles, you know, without somebody having to sit down for three or four hours having to figure that out manually. So the routing tools, and for a lot of people, that's kind of the number one thing. For other customers, it's customer service, okay? And when I talked about the GPS kind of um, being integrated with everything else, every one of those routes that you saw um, is basically behind the scenes. We know where the truck started. The little icon for each one of the, of the houses is one of your customers. You can see the vehicle is live here and you can see we got to this particular customer and it tells me we got there at 2.33 and we left at 2.38. So that was a really quick five minute delivery. Anytime you want to, you can pop over to this screen and see, in this case, we've already delivered to four customers and we've got one left on this trip. Anytime you want, you can also just mouse over the truck and tell how many miles this truck, this driver is driven, who's driving the truck, what what location it is, what speed they're going. So you know everything there is about all of your, um, you know, your drivers and your trips that you might, you know, could possibly imagine. Other people's um, reasons for looking at a solution like this is driver accountability. And because we integrate the GPS with the trips and the orders, you really do have driver accountability. We know how many miles a trip should take that's the plan mileage here. We know what they actually did. So we'll compute a differential. We'll show you which trips for which drivers where they drove excessive mileage, where they made a delivery out of order, where they had excessive drive time. We can also figure out and show you whether your drivers are taking care of the vehicles. We can easily show you here, harsh turns, hard braking, hard acceleration. We've got a, a little graph like this for, um, speeding events. So just about anything that you'd want to know about a driver, we can show it to you. And then last but not least, and I'll, I'll get into a little more detail here, and this is improved customer communications. So what a lot of our customers are doing these days is using our app. So we have a branded app where your customer can basically sign up, choose the notifications that they'd like to get. So they want to see when your truck um, goes in route with the ETA. They want to see when it's been delivered. They'll get a push notification like this, and they can basically just touch a button, pop into it. It'll show them when was the order created, when did it, when did, when did the truck leave, what time did it get to my my job site or my customer site, when it was actually delivered. In other words, what time they left, so you can tell how long the stop times or the service times are. And you can also get a list of all the items, descriptions, and quantities of actually what's on the order. In addition to that, if you're doing proof of delivery signatures and pictures, you can see I just have an example here of the first picture that was taken where they're showing the whole load as it was on the truck and where they placed some of the materials at the actual job site. And there's 10 pictures in between. We also know that Kyle Kern um, signed for this. And this signature, basically the picture of this signature can flow back into the ERP system. So you could see it in um, Cloud Suite, in SXE. So those are a lot of the reasons why we do this sort of thing and why customers implement our solution. Um, so Gloria, if you would, could you um, pop up the first polling question, please? So the first question is what ERP, and let me do this, I guess I'm supposed to display this. What ERP are you using? Is it Cloud Suite? Is it SXE, A+, Fax, or maybe one of the other N4 platforms? If you would, um, 
We'd love to know that about the group of folks that are watching today. All righty. So now I want to talk a little bit about the integration with those different systems. So all these things up here can't really happen unless we have full integration with the platform that we're communicating with. So I want to just talk about that for a moment. So we can automatically pull in sales orders, customer pickups, transfers between locations. If you use your vehicles for vendor pickups and vendor returns, um, all of those things will come in automatically. In addition, we've got two-way information. So we're gonna write information actually back to the ERP system, things such as order status, truck, route, ETA. And one of the other customer service features is of course the ability in the ERP system to see the delivery date, the ETA. And this, this is a number that will update real time all through the day. So that would be at the fingertips of your users. We'll also send the signature back into many of the platforms. So to get a little look at what that looks like here, um, here's an example of what it looks like in IDM for Cloud Suite, where, where you essentially can just click a button, you see the order number, the date and time, the typed in name, and the person that actually signed the order. So all of that happens automatically. Another thing that's pretty important to a lot of customers is the fact that we can automatically up this, update the ship stage via an API, either in SXE Cloud Suite or in the TWL system. All right, so I think those are all the things that I really kind of wanted to talk about here. So I guess it's what you call demo time. All right. So what you're looking at here, this is the ODT view client. And I have just enough time to show you some of the basics of the solution. We talked a bit about customer service and the way that you could look things up or see the ETA and the signature and those type of things in Cloud Suite or whatever ERP you're using. I'll also show you here how that happens in ODT. So I'm gonna just type in the name of one of my customers. So I type in ASH because I'm looking for Ash Creek. And the solution is gonna show me here for any order that's been scheduled and put on a truck, the status. So in this case, the status of the order is in route. If I needed to see the items on the order, I can simply double click on it and it'll show me the sold to and the ship to and uh, the salesperson on the order and who wrote the order, the requested delivery date, and then my quantities, unit of measure, item numbers, and um, item descriptions. I can see that this order has an adjusted ETA of 1001. So the customer calls and wants to know where's my order. It's right there at my fingertips. I know who the driver is and what the stop number is. And I can also double click on this adjusted ETA and it'll open up that little window that I showed you a moment ago that showed where the truck was and, um, and, and where the truck was along that route. So from a customer service standpoint, super easy for a user to um, access that information. From a scheduling standpoint, I have just enough time today to show you a couple things. So I talked about the drag and drop scheduling. So here's what I'm gonna do. Let's just say that I wanted these four orders right here to go on a truck. Um, we're just doing kind of an off the cuff, easy deal. So I'm gonna basically just drag this up here and say, I'm gonna put it on this truck for this afternoon. And let's say we want that truck to leave at, um, at uh, two o'clock. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take another one, drag another one up here. I'm gonna drag a fourth one up here, a third one and a fourth one. So very simple to do that. If I want the system to optimize it for me, I can simply right click on it and I can click the optimize button and boom, it just puts it in that order for me automatically. All right, pretty simple, pretty easy. Now there's some other, so other ways to do routing, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you an automated version. So I'm gonna pull up my advanced routing wizard and let's just imagine that it's 4.30 in the afternoon and that's kind of what our cutoff time is for doing routing for tomorrow. So I come into the advanced routing wizard 
and I just hit the start new button. All right, and it's going to prompt me with some questions. And uh, again, because we don't have a lot of time, I can't give you a real detailed explanation, but these are all of my orders for tomorrow. And I have the capability to filter based on ship via or load types or map zones or time windows. So if there's a reason that I might want to run this in, in like multiple sessions, I can do that. But for the purposes of my demo, I've got 45 orders here and I've got, um, I've got five trucks that are available for making delivery. So I'm going to just kind of run it what I call wide open. Now, if I had a truck that was out of service, I could just simply uncheck it or a driver that was sick and we didn't have a fill in driver, we would just uncheck that truck and that driver. If I have a driver that's coming in late, I'll just change the start time. If I've got a driver that has to leave early, I just override the work time and the drive time. Otherwise, if everything's good on the wizard, I just hit next. Now this little screen here, all this really does is this groups all of my orders and, and just as an example, um, it, it basically tells me for any particular customer or stop that I've got how many orders I have. And if I had too many orders, it would fit on one truck, it would turn this green and give me, I'm sorry, red, obviously, and give me the opportunity to ungroup some of those because we're going to maybe have to deliver them in two different trucks. Otherwise, again, the wizard basically just allows me to um, click through it and hit the start button. And now what it's really doing, if you remember back on that PowerPoint slide, it's looking at all of these orders for all the customers. It's looking at the time windows. It's looking at the capacity of the vehicles. And it's figuring out for tomorrow, do I need all five of those trucks in order to get all of my commitments done for all of my customers? And you can see in a matter of about 15 seconds, it went through those 45 orders and did it for me. As an example, let's say you have 200 orders and 10 trucks, it can do something like that in about five minutes time. So once it does this, I can click this little compare button. And what it shows me right here is, is that my work effort for tomorrow is only going to require that I use four trucks to do those 45 orders. And it's going to take me about 26 hours of work time, a little shy of seven hours of drive time. We're going to drive about 256 hours, excuse me, I mean miles. And our, what we call our efficiency cost is about 600 bucks, just a little below. As long as it's the same as our penalized cost, everything is good. So if I want to see what the software came up with in terms of the routing, all I really have to do is come over here to this particular screen and just click the route scheduler button. And then what it's going to do is it's going to show me on the screen what all those routes look like. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull this over just a little bit. Whoops, actually, I need to change this to tomorrow and um, redo that. Give it a second. All right, so what it did now is, is that these are the four routes that it came up with. So I'm going to just take a moment and kind of step you through a few things. On the left-hand side over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a button and contract this. So these are the four vehicles that it chose to use. And you can see each vehicle has an assigned driver and it's got a maximum weight and maximum volume. So I'm OK on all of that. If I wasn't, it would turn one of these yellow. So if I if I expand this one level, what it's showing me here is basically it's, it's showing me each of my trips. And if I uh, if I expand it one more level then what it does for each trip, is it shows me each stop for each trip. So it's calculating an estimated delivery cost for each of my trucks. And then down below here, I can drill into the details and I can actually see the dollars on each order, the gross margin dollars and the estimated delivery cost for each one of those orders on each stop. It'll allow me scroll through all those. It will allow me to, if I were to click on one of these trips, it'll highlight that trip and put it in the middle of the screen. If I were to click the trip over here on the left, it'll again highlight it and then it'll highlight that particular trip right here. Now, one thing I'll point out, I did my calculations based on weight, but it also did a volume calculation. What this is telling me is I'm a little bit, I'm 479 cubes in this case over the volume of my vehicle or whatever my volume might be. So that may be something that I might need to address. 
So if I love the way all these routes are, I simply, you know, do nothing. If for some reason I needed to, let's say, move some of these orders off of this particular vehicle, I can do that really easily. I can right click and I can uncombine an order. Okay. If I needed to, for whatever reason, manually override and change the sequence, let's say I needed to put Baker properties first, for whatever reason, I could actually drag it up here and kind of move that out of the way and let them go first. And then if I wanted to re-optimize the rest of the trip after doing that, I simply highlight those, right click and hit optimize selected. And then the software will do those calculations for me display that on the screen. If I like it, I just simply yes, and everything's good. So there's a couple different views of this particular solution. What I'm gonna do here is click, and what it does is it shows me, this is what all of those routes look like for tomorrow. So a couple things to point out. You see the little clock right here? That means that that order had a time window and it needed to be delivered between eight and 10. I've got the same thing over here. So the software respected that and took care of that. Here's another one over here that this one needed to be delivered between one and five. Two of the orders on that trip had to be delivered between one and five. So you can see the software figure that out for us automatically. No work involved, okay? Um, so now what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back to today and I've got a trip up here right here that I'm gonna use for proof of delivery. But before I hop into that and actually show you the proof of delivery, and Gloria, would you put up um, polling question number two, please? Okay, so since we're talking about proof of delivery, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to know whether anybody out there is using a proof of de delivery or POD solution. Could be ours, could be another solution like Infor, Maybe you don't use it, but you're currently looking into it right now. Or the last question would be no, and we're not really interested in adding one. So um, if you guys would take a look at that, I would appreciate it. Alrighty, so while that was happening, I just took a moment to open up a little piece of software here that will let me display my um, that, will, that will let me display my uh, mobile device. So this little trip here that has three stops on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up ODT Mobile. Okay, so this is my driver app. And you can see here it says use the right tool for the right job here. So what the driver would do when, when they're ready to leave in the morning or maybe they're doing a second run in the afternoon is they simply would open up the ODT mobile proof of delivery app and touch delivery tracking. Now in real life, when the truck leaves, when they just drive out of your building, the GPS in the truck would automatically make the trip change to a status of what we call in route it would calculate the trip time, the trip miles, and it would, um, it would calculate an estimated time of arrival for every stop on that trip. I did it kind of manually here since I'm obviously sitting at my desk and I'm not going anywhere. So the driver simply then touches the manage order button and these are the three stops that they need to make. Super simple, easy to do. If it's a customer that they know how to get to, you know, they can just obviously um, drive to that customer. And when they arrive at that customer site, they touch the name of the customer right here. So Austin Flair Homes. If there's multiple orders, they can hit the select all. And then it will open up the screen and show them all the products that need to be unloaded. So at that point, they're going to unload the vehicle. When they're finished, they're typically going to leave a delivery copy, one delivery copy with the customer. The second copy, which is typical that you would take with you to get signed, won't need to do that anymore. You'll simply hit the next button and then choose one of the delivery options here. And I'm going to choose the delivered with signature. So this is how we prompt the driver. The driver would then hand the phone or the tablet to the customer. The customer would simply sign and touch the save button or maybe hand it back to the driver. They can rate the, the uh, delivery if they'd like to. And 
obviously doing it kind of all in one step here, which is super easy and touch the next button. Now here's where we have a, the first kind of really nice advantage. We've got the typed in name, okay? John Kevin O'Connor. In the interest of time, I'm gonna use the talk to text. Um, you could simply, obviously, let's say that I was the third, I could you know, just touch it on the keyboard and hit done. I'm gonna to touch submit. Now, if we want to prompt the driver for pictures also, that would be the next thing on the screen. I'm gonna back up here and show you where I'm working from today. All right, I'm gonna just take one picture to make it quick, hit the check mark. The thumbnail of that picture would show up here. There's no limit to the number of pictures your driver can take. Once they've, you know, they've gotten all the pictures they want, they simply hit the next button, okay? And then they come back and there's a place to put in delivery notes. If they wanna put notes here, they can, but they're obviously not required. I'll go ahead and put some just so you see how it works. Um, delivery went great, customer accepted everything in full. Now, of course, you would know that because that's just the way things work. We're gonna hit the submit button. And then behind the scenes, if you notice here, this trip turned to green. I'm gonna do one more and then we'll show you kind of how everything works out. The little yellow here tells the driver that we have made that delivery. Let's go to, in fact, let's do one other thing. Let's say that BetterBuilt is a new customer and we don't know how to get there. So we can simply touch the little blue icon and it will map that particular customer site, show me where I am currently, and then allow me to just hit the start button, which we all know how to do. Once we've arrived at the customer site, if you're on an Android device, you hit the back button. On iOS, you come up here and just touch the ODT mobile. And then we select the customer, go through that same process. And let's say this time we arrive there and there's nobody there to sign. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a picture of the delivery. I'll do my phone. Um, I'll do my little pin here where I made some notes today. And then we'll hit the check mark. We'll hit next. We'll say um, no one on site to sign. Pictures show proof of delivery. Okay, we'll do that and we'll hit submit. All right. So in the meantime, what happened was this automatically updated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just double click on this and open up what we call the edit window and just show you kind of the whole thing. So this was the first order. I click view signature. Here's the signature, the typed in name, the date and time. This picture of the signature would typically flow into the ERP system. So you'd have that, you know, at your fingertips, the pictures that we took would also, they would basically flow up and here's the picture that I took today. Here's some other pictures that I've just taken from other demonstrations. So you can see it's real time, um, happens automatically like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually um, come back to my PowerPoint for just a moment. And there was, um, I just want to come back over here and let me flip backwards one more time. I'm just gonna talk about here the Amazon stuff. So this is where those pictures would show up on the customer app just to kind of show that again and the signature just to sort of repeat that, okay? And um, that kind of concludes the demo portion. I'm gonna do this really quick and just kind of show you that we're collecting a lot of data with the ODT system. And um, so we've got a nice little dashboard. We have customer, driver, location, vehicle, all of those are the different kind of report categories. You can do things like an on-time delivery, a customer productivity type report, um, stop deviation report basically shows me if my drivers are screwing around doing things where in this case, this shows me that they kind of had a long stop longer than normal, but these two stops here would be where they actually stopped someplace where there wasn't really even a customer. So that sort of wraps it up. Um, Gloria, what do we have in terms of Q&A? Has anybody uh, um, asked any questions that we can answer for them? We do. Somebody posted anonymously in the Q&A bank and said, does your tool have the ability to import tracking from UPS or FedEx and display it in the app with their truck orders? And you and I had a brief conversation about this before we actually went live. So would you like to answer that for everyone that's online? Yes, just repeat that question one more time. They wanted to know if your tool, if your software solution had the ability to import tracking from UPS and FedEx and display it 
in the app with their truck orders? At this point, uh, the, I guess the answer to that at this point is no, we have not done that. Um, not sure if we've thought about that, whether that would be a possibility, certainly something we could talk about. Typically people that are using our solution are people that are making their own deliveries with their own vehicles or maybe third party vehicles. Um, but that's a good question. And you know, I can see how if you were doing both, you might wanna have it all in one place. Yes, that's what I had thought too. And I actually did take the liberty of typing that into the answer portal, but I wanted to give that to the benefit of anyone else who might be thinking about that question as well. Um, Mary Jane Nash says, uh, does it create a load plan for a truck? Um, from the standpoint of figuring out um, how you should load the vehicle in terms of you know, this box or this carton or this case going in this particular place, the answer is no. Essentially what most customers do is, again, it, and a lot of it depends on the type of vehicle, but if you're doing, you know, a, a, a standard box truck, then you're typically un, you're loading from back to front. If you're doing a, you know, curtain side kind of a trailer, it's kind of, um, you know, side to the front, but we have a lot of customers that are in the billing materials business and wow. Um, there's just really not a good way to do that sort of thing when materials are, are not case or cartonized. So the answer really, I guess I would say is, is really, no, we don't do that. We, we, um, we produce stops and stop sequences, but not really a load plan in terms of how, how the, how's the best way to load the, the vehicle. The only software I've ever seen that does that is kind of container software for, you know, like um, fleet, I'm not fleet, but um, shipping container, you know, like um, transatlantic, you know, on, on uh, ships and those kind of things. Sorry. Good question though. Yeah, great question. Um, also, does your solution integrate with TWL and in for ERP systems? It, it definitely does. So it, it, it integrates with all the ones that I mentioned with Cloud Suite, in for SXE, FACS and A+, those are all things that we have, um, you know, two-way integrations for on both of those. We do integrate with TWL as well. I didn't mention the details. It was kind of on the slide, but there's a couple of things we do with TWL. Number one, we will send the route and the stop and the carrier back into TWL. We also send that into, you know, SXE and Cloud Suite or back to the ERP. We also can get the, the TWL status that status can update the status in ODT. I didn't really talk a lot about that, but it can actually update that. And then if you're using case carton functionality, we can also, in, we can also pull the case carton functionality. And then the last little piece of that integration is in proof of delivery, instead of displaying those line items, you could choose to display the cases and cartons so the driver could then either select, you know, like I did with my finger, or if you, if you used a kind of more the high powered scan gun type of mobile device, you could actually scan the cases and cartons off the truck as well. So that's a great question. I, let me throw one other thing out there. We're also looking at the possibility of creating a scan on the vehicle with ODT for those cases and cartons as well. We're working with some current TWL ODT customers looking at that application. So great question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, next question, is there a way for our sales customer service teams to view delivery status? There is. So if they're sitting in the office, th there's really two different choices in the office. Now, number one, since we're writing a lot of that data back into your ERP system, we have a number of customers that will actually have, they create a DQ screen in Cloud Suite or SXE or A+, um, and then they populate that screen with all of the data that we can write back. Secondly, we have unlimited users. So the client that I used when I showed you that first customer service example, I mean, I could pop that back up if you want to, but that, that particular screen is accessible to any customer, I mean, any user. So if they were looking, again, I'll do use the Ash Creek example. So they could simply just type in part of the ship to name and pull it up and know that it's in route and what time it's supposed to be there and all that kind of stuff. Um, the other thing is, is that the customer app that I showed you actually has an internal user version of it at no additional cost. So your internal users can log into that app. So if they're out of the store, they're out on the road, 
All they have to do is, is, is have the app loaded. They can log into the app, choose one of your locations, and then they have access to all that same information that the customer did in term. They can look it up by PO, by customer number, um, and also by just um, uh, sales order number or by customer name. So they have access to all that from the app as well. That's a great question. I'm glad you, that's one of the things that I go through when I'm doing an hour and a half demo, but there just wasn't enough time to get into that. So thanks for that. Um, here's another really interesting question too. It says, do you offer in-cab in -cab cameras? That's another great, great question. And you know what um, we do, we're, we're just starting to offer that now. We've got a couple of them out at, I think about three or four customers. We're, we're beta testing it. I mean, we've been working on it for quite a while, so we haven't done a general release yet, but yes, yeah, so we have a forward facing camera. Um, we have um, a driver facing camera that can do um, AI, so um, detecting things like if they're smoking a cigarette, talking on the phone, if they're yawning or things like that, and actually send them visible alerts or send an email alert to you know, a, a, a logistics or fleet person letting them know what's going on. And we also have one that, that if, you, if you have your, um, if you have like, crew members in the vehicle, there's another, um, there's another view that will show, you know, like if you had a multi, you know, two row pickup or something like that, we can show that as well. So yeah, we do that as well. That's a great question. I'm glad that was asked. <laughs> it's a great question. Something that I wouldn't think of. So that's very interesting. Um, also, another question is sometimes my drivers get hung up at a job site. Are ETAs adjusted throughout the trip in real time? Yes, they are. So when the, when the trip initially stops, there's an ETA, as you see right here on the screen, the adjusted ETA, well, that is if you're still seeing my screen. Anyway, the adjusted ETA is updated about every 10 minutes. So it's real time throughout the day. It's just happening at all times. And that adjusted ETA is also being written back into the ERP. So you can see that on your screen there. Um, if you have that, what I call the DQ screen. And of course, it's on the, the app as well. Everywhere you see ETA, honestly, it's just the adjusted ETA is really what's displayed. Understood. Um, also, I just wanted to stand corrected. I have not had the pleasure of working with DQ Technologies in the past, but I understand that you guys have been around a really long time. <laughs> We have, we've been around since 92 and we've been an N4 partner for probably, I don't know. I mean, we've done, we've done work with N4 for at least 20 years, but we've been an N4 partner. I mean, I've personally been at probably six, well, this year with the virtual one, seven tugs myself, and they were going many years before I was around. Well, I just want to say it's a delight to meet you. I don't have any more questions that have populated thus far. So Kevin, if someone wanted to reach out to your company for further information or a deep dive demo, what's the best way to get in touch with you folks? Yeah, let me um, flip back on that PowerPoint and um, we'll hit one more. So you can basically reach us our main number 512-248-8324 and you choose option two and that'll go to the sales line and one of us will pick up the phone. There's multiple folks here. You can also just send an email to sales at dqtech.com and that will come in to Jill Kimmon who um, typically will distribute those out to one of us. Um, it, you know, and, and then we'll follow up with you, you know, ASAP. Well, it has been a pleasure to have you here with us today, Kevin, and I want to thank you very much for sharing all of the detailed information about your tracking solutions. And with, with most all of our webinar content, this presentation will be available on our TUG website for future reference and posted to the appropriate forum board with the link for viewing on the next business day. We'd like to thank and all of those of you who joined us today and also invite those of you who are with us today to join us next Tuesday on June 29th at 2 p.m. as web presenter dives into to uh, how to revolutionize your quoting process with WPCRM. And for those of you who aren't members yet, I always say, why not join us today? Hop on over to www.theusergroup.org and sign up. And as they say in Hollywood, folks, that is a wrap. <laughs>